So good evening, everyone, and thank you for joining me tonight. My name is John Locke. I'm really excited to talk about the Trading Triangle Program and how it can help transform your trading as well as your life. And before we get into that, I think it's going to be beneficial if you know who I am, so I'm going to quickly tell you a little bit about myself and how the Trading Triangle Program came about. I started Locking Your Success in 2004 as a success coaching company that created that I created with a vision of helping people to fulfill their dreams and live better lives. At the time, I didn't teach options trading and I didn't know anything about the stock market at all. What I mainly did was to help people find out what they want, create goals, and then to make the mindset and habit changes needed to reach those goals. Well, in 2005, I happened to meet up with this guy, Phil Town, at a success seminar in Boston. And he got me interested in, start, in the stock market. And once I started, I really dove into it. I learned everything from day trading to long-term investing to complex option spreads. I went to every class I could find. I spent tens of thousands of dollars in education. And after a while, or what seemed like a long time doing this, I finally started gravitating towards complex option spreads. And one thing I realized after trying just about every strategy I could think of was that was no commercial available strategy that actually teaches somebody how to properly manage complex options positions. I mean, sure, you got the guys that teach you know, verticals and condors and butterflies, and they teach you all kinds of adjustments and stuff. And, you know, they work sometimes. But, you know, my results when I was doing that seemed to be more a function of luck than anything else. And the last thing I wanted to do was have a big part of my income, depending on me being lucky, because uh, you know how that goes. So because I wanted to understand how to actually trade and not being one to walk away from a challenge, I decided to gain uh, all the experience I could by putting on a whole bunch of complex option spreads. And I wanted to learn about condors, butterflies, diagonals, and calendars, because I kind of liked the market-neutral aspect of trading, positive data trading. So that's, that's what I kind of gravitated to. And I wanted to learn how to manage those. So I went in and I put on 30 butterflies, 30 condors, 30 diagonals, and 30 calendars on 30 different stocks, making it for a total of 120 trades going at the same time. And I quickly found out that 125 trades is way too many to trade. And I also found out that you know, basically, you know, if you're doing a calendar, a calendar and making adjustments, you're trading a diagonal. If you're doing a butterfly and making adjustments, you're trading a condor anyway. So they're all basically the same thing. So I cut my trades down to 60 by only trading butterflies and diagonals, and I continued to trade them. And after about five or six months, I decided to drop the calendars because they weren't performing as well as my butterflies. And I traded the 30 butterflies for the remainder of the year. I ended up trading 600 monthly trades in one year. And that's a lot of trades. And to get an idea of how much experience that actually is, if, you, if I was, went in and I started doing two trades per month, it would take me 25 years to do 600 trades. So that's a lot of experience I gained, and I became really, really good at trading complex option spreads. Uh, other people in my trading groups and stuff, they started to notice. The next thing you know, I'm teaching people and coaching people how to trade. Unfortunately, um, one of the things I found out when I started coaching traders was that many of them had a lot of the mechanics down, just as I did. They knew most of the facts about options. They even knew you know, about the Greeks and complex option spreads and how to make all these adjustments. But just like me, none of them were making any money. They weren't profitable. And even worse, they were actually losing significant amount, amounts of money despite years of uh, education and trying you know, different strategies uh, all the time. So why wasn't trading working for them? And you know, by that I mean, you know, how could someone spend thousands of dollars, countless hours on trading education, and practice month after month and still have poor performance? Well, I found out that there are a lot of reasons, and that is what the Trading Triangle Program is all about. It's about teaching traders what they need to do to become successful and reach their trading goals. And to do this, we focus on three things. 
we're going to focus on your system or your trading system. We're going to focus on psychology and we're going to take a look at creating a business out of this, assuming you want to go ahead and be more than a um, uh, trade for more than a hobby. Let's start by taking a look at the path of a typical income trader. You get a guy or or a woman, but usually a man, who come who, who goes out and they want to make money for whatever reason, and they figure trading is a great way to do that. So he looks at some free webinars or reads some books on strategies and opens up an account, and starts trading. You know, maybe he does well, maybe he doesn't. But either way, eventually he takes a hit to his account and he figures, you know, hey, maybe I need uh, some more training. Uh, so he buys some stuff and, you know, he starts uh, educating himself on training. So he comes across this strategy and it looks great and he tries a strategy to see if it works. And maybe it works for a while, maybe it doesn't. But either way, he takes a hit to his account and he figures he needs more training and a new strategy. So he buys more stuff, he joins more trading groups, he continues looking for this magic strategy that's going to give him consistent income, and he comes across another one. And he tries that to see if it works. And maybe it works for a while, maybe it doesn't. And the cycle goes on and on, right? So do you notice the pattern there? It's the endless circle that goes nowhere. And in coaching, we call this the shiny object syndrome. And it doesn't just happen with trading. It can happen with anything. It's where you jump at something that looks good and where you run into a little bit of difficulty, then they turn around and they jump to the next best thing. So that's what a vast majority of traders end up doing when they're trading. And do you know the most dangerous thing about the whole situation is that because the most dangerous, yo, know, I'm sorry, I wasn't sharing my slides. I just put them out there, Ray. And you should see my screen now. Do you guys see my screen? Okay, thank you. There really wasn't much for slides. I'll go backwards. We just had um, uh, my initial screen with my information on it, uh, on, on, on who I am, picture of the trading triangle, and we have our psychology screen. And thank you. Thank you for letting me know that. So. The most, let's get back to the thing here, I think I was talking about, um, yeah, the most dangerous situation about actually finding something that works early on in your trading career is that you find out that it, that it works well and you get overconfident because here's what happens, right? Let's say I stumble across this perfect strategy and it's generating, I don't know, three, four, five percent a month return and it works almost all the time and I think, hey, I'm a genius. I came in here and I'm doing great. So I ramp up my size, I drop all my money into it, I quit my crummy job, I'm living the dream, and then one month I take a hit. No big deal, I say to myself. That's not going to happen again. But it does happen again. And now, now, I'm, on my, now I'm out on my own, and I, I'm, li I'm depending on my trading income. Uh, so you know, maybe even the losses I took aren't even that bad, but that loss drew down my account some. And of course, I had to, not only did the loss draw down my account, but I also had to draw out a few thousand extra dollars to cover my bills, which drew the account down a little more. And now because my account's smaller, I need to make 7% per month just to pay my bills. But that's not a big deal either, I say to myself. I'll just squeeze the trade for a little more this month and everything's going to be fine. Well, next month comes along, and one of the things that happens when you need to make money when you're trading you get so concerned about losing money again that you go off your plan and you, you're you afraid to draw down and you start making um, rash decisions and you end up losing the trade again. So I went in, that's what I did. I lost the trade again and I say to myself, okay, well, you know, now I need to make a few thousand more dollars uh, out of the account to cover more expenses because I didn't get paid again this month. And now I'm thinking, hmm. Between the withdrawal and the loss, now I need to make 10% next month just to cover my expenses. You know what? I heard about this great strategy that returns 10% a month, I'll say to myself. And maybe I'll give that a try. I'll abandon my strategy that works so well. And I'll go ahead, and next thing you know, I'm starting jumping around from system to system again. And then I'm, you know, half my savings is gone, and I'm looking for a job. And you know, some people, I, I talk to them and they say, well, that's not really going to happen or that, that, that's not going to happen to me. 
And I'm here to tell you that it does happen. I see it all the time, you know, on a way too regular basis. So this is just one of the many obstacles that you're going to face in a journey to become a great trader, especially if you want to trade full time at some point. So, you know, as you can see, even if you find some system that's working in a current environment, and even if you can follow it, and even if you made money for a couple of years in a row, that doesn't mean you're going to have a long-term success in trading, especially if you go out on your own. And even if it does, right, even if you do have long-term success, does it mean that you're going to be happy? In other words, is trading, is that going to end up being what you really want to do? Uh, you know, we see hundreds of examples of people who appear to be uh, extreme, extremely successful. They're talented, they're rich, they're famous, they have just about anything that you or I could only dream of. And at the same time, they're absolutely miserable. They're not doing what their true passion is, and you know, maybe they work for money or whatever, but all that money and all those things, it doesn't make them happy. And I don't want that to happen to you. So going forward, let's take a look at the, uh, the trading triangle. First of all, the trading triangle system isn't, it's not a trading system. It's a customized one-on-one -on -one coaching program that's designed to take you from where you currently are to where you want to be. In the program, I take everything I know about success in life coaching, everything I know about creating a successful business, and everything I know about trading to help guide you through the journey of becoming a happy person and a profitable trader, as well as a, as a uh, successful business owner. So in the program, what we do is we start with goals. And because in order to create the perfect trading style for you, the perfect business for you, and the perfect life for you, we need to know what you want. And unfortunately, a lot of people don't even know that. They have no idea what they want. And the, the thing is, with the market in general, it's pretty simple to make money in the market. I could probably show you 100 ways to do it. There are strategies all over the Internet that are profitable in wide ranges of market environments. The problem is that any of these strategies, they take a reasonable amount of time to learn, they require a lot of practice, they require discipline, and they all require reading the market in one form or another so that you know when to use them and you know when not to use them and you know when you have to modify them. Now, when I say that trading is simple and there are lots of systems out there that work, a lot of people argue with me, and you know, some people believe me, some people don't. But either way, you know, let's just take that bias and put it aside for now, and let's choose to believe that there are multiple ways of making money in the market. This being the case, how do you know which style of trading to choose? Well, in order to answer that question, we have to know what you want. You see. Here's the thing. When you take the approach of looking at, for any trading system that's going to make you money and you don't really take anything else into consideration, you may be spending thousands of dollars and years of your, years of your life learning something that ultimately when you actually figure out how to do it, you don't like it and you don't want to do it. right? And that's, that doesn't make any sense. For example, you know, if the reason you want to trade is because you want to quit your job and the reason you want to quit your job is because you want freedom, whatever that means, right? So we have to figure out what freedom means to you. And But let's just say you see freedom as not having to be on a schedule and not having to sit in front of the computer half the day. And then you proceed to spend thousands of dollars, several years, and you finally become profitable at a strategy. Unfortunately, that strategy requires you to be in front of the computer whenever the, mar whenever the market's open. You know, at that point, you're basically doing the same thing you were doing before, only you're just doing something different. You're, you're still, you're, uh, whenever the market's open, you have to be there, and you, you need to be in front of your computer. So that doesn't make a whole lot of sense. So the first thing we do in the program is we take a look at what you really want. Not at what you think you want, not at what you say you want, but we really dig in and figure out what you really want. We do this because what you want is going to determine the goals that you're going to set, and the goals you set are going to determine the types of trading that you should be looking at, or if you be, should be trading at all, right? Because look, trading is a very challenging business. It's probably significantly more challenging than whatever you're doing now, and if you're trading just to make money or to work less, and you really don't like to trade, 
then you're just setting yourself up to do something that's going to make you miserable. And I don't want that for you, and I don't think you want that e either. So there are countless ways to make money in the world. And with the Internet, you can make money doing virtually anything. So if you're going to spend your time learning how to make money, you might as well choose something that you actually like to do. And if trading's not that thing, then you then we should go out and maybe point you in another direction and have you um, you know do something else to make money. So the point in this is figuring out what you want and creating your goals is is vitally important. And if you don't know what you want, the great part is is that we have exercises in the program, and that's basically part of the program is to help you figure out what you want because most people never really thought about it. They just they they think they know what they want. They just want more money, but that's not what's going to make them happy. So we want to figure out what you really want. And once we do that and we properly set your goals and your goals are set, and assuming your trading is part of those is part of those goals, the next step we want to do is we want to take a look at your psychology and your natural tendencies. One thing that's very important is to, is to determine whether or not your trading uh, goals match your psychology and whatever it is you whatever it is whatever way you naturally act. For example, if you have a goal of making ten thousand dollars a month, and you're also very risk averse, and you get completely stressed out if your account draws down five thousand dollars in a given month, then that's not a formula for success because that's not going to work. The simple fact in trading is that you have to invest, and this is the way you have to look at it. You can't be looking at these things as losses. You have to be looking at it from this perspective. You have to invest a certain amount of money any given month to find out if your trade is going to produce a profit. And if you're not willing to do that, then you're not going to be making the money that, you, that you're going to make. So the reality is with this income market neutral type of trading, which I believe most of us are doing, is that you have to risk about as much as you're willing to – you have to risk losing about as much as you're willing to – you want to win in order to get there. And if you're not willing to, work, to do that, then and in, then – the income strategy isn't going to work for you, the, the strategy of getting $10,000 and not willing to draw down. So if this is the case and you're not willing to draw down the money, then you'll either have to change your expectations to expect a, dollar, a smaller dollar amount profit, or you're going to have to go in and do some mindset work, which is you know, where, where I come in with my uh, life and success coaching, where we come in and we – they essentially change your mindset so that you understand and you're comfortable drawing down the amount you have to draw down in order to get the profits you're looking for. Of course, what, from there, you know, once we uh, get that all straightened out, of course, uh, we want to take a look at your assets as well. We want to make sure that whatever your goals are and whatever your trading style is, that you understand what you need for assets to make your dream, dream come true. And if you don't have those assets, then not only do we have to figure out you know, how to get your trading, how to get your profitable trading, we also have to figure out how we're going to uh, make a plan to get the assets that we're going to need. <clears throat> so once we know what we want, we take a look at your psychology, uh, your expectations, and what you need for assets, then, then and only then can we make an intelligent decision about specific trading strategies. Because uh, we want to pick a strategies that are capable of producing the type of returns that you're looking for, while at the same time matching the type of schedule you want to keep, in a manner that's not going to keep you stressed out all day, right? Because that that's what's going to make you happy, and and that in a nutshell is what the psychology side of the trading triangle represents. And once we get that done we go to our next portion of the triangle, which is the system. And we start the search for the uh, trading system that's going to be perfect for you. Now, the good thing is, once we have our other things in place, we're only going to look at systems that match the parameters we're looking for. And once we find something that's close to the parameters we want, we will then work with that system until it produces the results we want. So in the program, I help you identify the types of systems that we should be looking at 
so that we can really narrow things down and limit our, you know, get our choices down. And maybe that's something, that system is something you've created before. Maybe it's one of my systems. Maybe it's somebody else's systems. Maybe it's something that we need to create from scratch. You see, I'm not attached to any specific trading system. I know that there are many, many systems out there that can make money. And if you put a good trader behind them, they're going to make money. And I also know that if you take the best, uh, most efficient system in the world and you put a poor trader behind it, it's not going to make money. So I'm not attached to the system. You, my goal is to create a system or find a system that's going to work for you and something that you can actually trade. So, you know, either way, you know, however we get this system, we work together to create a trading plan or a set of trading plans that are capable of reaching your goals in, the, in each of the 10 different market types. So as far as systems, I know what you're thinking. Uh, you, know, what, you know, what do you want for a system? I, I kind of know what you're thinking there. You're thinking, you know, I want a system that I can trade the exact same way every month and have it perform well in all market environments. And I'm here to tell you that you are not going to find it. You can search to the end of your life. Uh, what you will find is systems that perform extraordinary, extraordinarily well in specific market environments. You will find systems that perform okay in most market environments, but you're not going to find a system that performs extremely well or even okay in all market environments. Unless, of course, you're adapting your system to the market environment, in which case you're not really trading the exact same way every month. You're you're adapting to market conditions. So, uh, so you know, as far as um, trading systems, you're going to be looking at you know three different types. Basically, we're going to be looking at uh, either a low yield, what I call a black box system, which is this basically this this rule based system that wins a small amount of small amount of money in most market conditions. Right? There's a lot of people that trade these, and they do fairly well, and then they get frustrated because they don't make enough money, and they go and jump to something else. If you're, if you're using a black box system that you trade the same way every way in every market conditions, and you're making a small amount of money every year, then you're right on track because that's what a system like that does. The other thing you might be looking at is uh, multiple higher yield black box systems, which again, are these rule-based systems that perform very well in specific market conditions and very poorly in others. The downside to something like this is, of course, you have to be in the right market conditions or you have to uh, be able to identify market conditions in order to trade them successfully. Now, I have people who, who, who trade multiple high-yield systems that perform well in different market environments at the same time because they don't want to look at market environments. However, what you end up with is a low-yield system because the ones that are, that are in the correct environment are doing really well, and the ones that are in the wrong environment are doing very poorly. They kind of average out to some sort of a low-yield system when you average them out. So identifying market conditions, obviously, is, is an essential part if you want to get into a high-yield strategy. And, of course, the third option you can look at is a higher-yield adaptable discretionary system, which uh, you modify your approach month to month as market conditions change. And that's the way that I like to trade. And, you know, that's the best way of trading for me. It might not be the best way of trading for you. But those are essentially the choices that you have when you're coming in and you're looking at trading systems. And really, any of these methods are, any of these methods are fine. And, you know, once you choose a method, you'll be able to narrow down your choices even further. Because if you're the type of person who has to win really consistently and you don't want to look at market conditions, you have to realize you're not going to make a heck of a lot of uh, return. And unless the, you know, the, unless the market conditions happen to, be, to match what's going on, and you'll be doing this low box system. If you're the type of person who you know, likes to be adaptable and read market conditions and you're good at it, then you can use a, a discretionary system or something or multiple uh, other systems that, that are going to take advantage of that when you know uh, or have an idea what the market's going to do. Okay. So anyway, once we choose a system, 
I teach you how to pro properly backtest the system and provide extensive backtesting assignments to help you fine-tune and gain confidence in the system. And from there, we move to paper trading and finally live trading, a small position, where we'll create a scale-up plan so that you can get to the position size you need to reach your goals. And at the same time, I'll also talk to you about keeping a trading journal as well as a psychology journal so that you know, we can track and improve our trading. Uh, and as you become a proficient trader, of course, uh, we'll also be looking at the business side of the triangle. And I hear all the time from other teachers and mentors or whatever to treat your trading like a business, but seldom does anybody ever tell you how to do it. And do they really know what that means uh, themselves? I, sometimes I don't know. And I say that's, that's a shame because you, know, you can be an excellent trader, you can be extremely profitable, you can have the perfect psychology, you know, be very consistent month after month, but if you don't know how to run a business, there's a really good chance that you're going to fail when it comes to making the transition from an employee to a full-time trader. Because here's the thing, right? Most traders are employees. They've never actually run a business. Therefore, they have this what I call employee mindset. And they expect a steady, consistent flow of money or income from week to week or month to month. And all I can say is for those of us who are entrepreneurs and we run our own businesses, uh, we know things don't work that way in a business. We know that even the most successful businesses, while they have times of tremendously high income, they're also going to have times of, uh, of extremely low income or even extended periods of losses. And just because a business loses for a period of time doesn't mean it's bad. It's just the way that it is, right? You're not an employee anymore. You're a business owner. So here's an example of what I might hear from somebody who comes to me and they want to trade full time. They'll say something like, you know, I've got $200,000 and I've gone over all my expenses and I need $10,000 a month to, to pay my expenses. So all I need to do is make 5% a month and I can go out and trade full time. And when I hear this, of course, the first thing I do is I congratulate them and, and, and uh, because there's probably only about 50% of the people I talk to who even go that far. I mean, a lot of people, they'll go out there and they, won't, they don't even know what their expenses are. They don't know how much money they can generate, and they want to trade, and they, they, they're ready to trade full time. So that's not a good way to do it. So I congratulate them for that. Uh, and then I kind of cringe a little bit because, you know, I know that um, they're going to need more than what they're saying in order to make things work out. Uh, first of all, if that $200,000 is all you have, in other words, that's pretty much your total net worth, and you're depending on using all that money and making an average of 5% per month over any given year, year after year, then you're simply not going to make it. Because even if you are capable of making an average of 5% a month, you're going to need considerably more than 200000 to make 10000 10, uh, even if you're making 5% a month on your trading, and here's why. You're going to need the 200000 to trade with. Uh, you're going to need an emergency fund of at least 12 months of your personal expenses. Now, if you were an employee, we'd say six months, three to six months. Being a business owner, you need at least 12 months. Uh, that, in this case, where we're trying to, where our expenses are $10,000 a month, we're talking $120,000 for that. You'll also need to consider business expenses once you start in business. Uh, which can be substantial. I mean, you're going to want to train yourself so you can get better. You're going to want to buy programs. You're going to you're going to have to replace computers. You've got a lot of business expenses. You have to add those in and have 12 months of business expenses. You need this because you're going to have emergencies. You're going to have unexpected expenses. You're going to have extended periods of losses. You're going to have extended periods of time when income is less than expected. It's just part of doing business, and. On top of that, you're going to make mistakes, and you're going to have unexpected losses when you should have won, and so on. Also, any loss that you take when you're trading, especially if you're drawing your, if you're planning on making ten thousand dollars and drawing it out, any losses you take is going to draw your account down, and in which case your account's going to need to be refunded. In addition to having to refund your account, you also have to pull out your monthly expenses. 
Uh, so, and as far as losses, you know, what can we expect for losses on an account like this? Well, if you're trying to get $10,000 a month trading, you're going to have to risk at least $10,000 a month, which means if you lose three months in a row, and I know that's unlikely, but it is certainly possible, especially if you have some mindset issues because, you know, you lost one month. Now you don't have enough money to trade with. Now you can't draw down anymore, and you're not willing to invest the money that you need to invest in order to see if your trade is going to win, and then you, you stop following your plan you're very likely to lose, to lose three months in a row. I see it all the time. So, you know, that being the case, you'll have to have at least $30,000 in an account that you put aside for simply refunding your trading account. And personally, I'd probably make that $60,000 because um, I need that $200,000 in the account in order to make my 5% and pay my bills. If the account goes away, I am out of business. I'm undercapitalized, and I'm back in the rat race. So I have to be able to refund my trading account. Plus, on top of that, I need to plan on my expenses going up over time. I mean, doesn't everything go up as, as we go along? So I'm going to need or want to increase the size of my trading account as I'm trading so that I can make enough money later to cover the additional expenses I'm going to need. And in addition to that, uh, I'll need to continue to, you definitely need to continue to build personal savings. And you'll have to refill your emergency account when you have to take it out, take money out of your emergency fund because if you don't make money trading, that's where it's going to come from. And plus, you're going to have to refill the account that uh, has, taken, has taken the trading loss so that you can keep your $200,000 in there. So it's going to take you, uh, you know, a considerable amount to do that, and there's a lot to think about before you leave your job and you start trading full-time. And this is the type of stuff that we go over in the business section of the Trading Triangle. As a matter of fact, uh, you know, we actually set up a full business plan with cash flow projections and all kinds of stuff so that, you know, you know what you need so that you can have the best shot possible to do well when you go out on your own. So that's a general overview of what the tra Trading Triangle is. And our goal in the program is to figure out what you want and provide you with the tools and knowledge that you need to get you where you want to be. The program, if you're interested in it, is a lot of work. It's completely customized to your situation, and it's going to consist of up to 48 one-on-one -on -one coaching sessions over a period of up to two years. It's designed to take you from an intermediate or beginner-level complex options trader all the way up to being uh, you know, a full-time options trader, if that's what you're looking to do. Uh, and, you know, of course, during that time, I do show you everything that I know, uh, and I persuade you any way that I can to get your mindset corrected and, and get you so you can be there. Now, the cost of a, of a program like this is uh, $69.95. So I only deal with five people at a time. If it's something you're interested in, then, then, then great. And if not, that's great, too. But, uh, you know, I'm just letting you know that it's available. And if you're not up to the challenge of becoming a full-time options trader, we have, and you just want to improve your trading, we have laser strategy sessions. We talk about pretty much anything related to trading and your life. So, you know, we can talk about, uh, you know, specific trading methods, goal setting, entries, exits, technical analysis, and we just do those on a session-by-session -session basis. Class on something like that is, again, currently is going to be going up shortly, but it's 225 a session or five sessions for $1,000. And we have our trading systems with the M3, where we can learn the you know, the cons the M3 is designed to learn to help you learn the concepts and mechanics of controlling your T plus zero line, and it's really the basis of all the more advanced programs. We have the bearish butterfly, which is a rule-based high yield strategy for volatile markets, or basically any time the market's overextended. In most markets, you can actually trade it as a monthly income trade. In the extremely bullish market we're in now, it's difficult. But, um, you know, then that just goes to the thing where if you're trading something in, a, in its environment, it's fantastic. This bearish butterfly is absolutely fantastic. Uh, huge, huge returns in when it's in its element. Uh, you know, low volatility, extremely uh, crazy uptrending markets is not its element. So uh, just keeping that in mind. Then we have the rock system, which is essentially designed to teach you how to identify pricing skews and how to gradually morph your trade back and forth between a very aggressive high theta position 
in a defensive position that withstands large price movements. And last but not least is the M21 program, which is my most advanced and probably going to be, is pretty much going to be a final uh, or highest level program they're going to put out. It, uh, it's unbelievable. And it's where you identify market conditions. We talk about tr identifying market conditions, trade execution, uh, trading psychology, advanced trade planning, and utilizing the M3 bearish butterfly and rock and kind of morphing all the systems around the market environment. It's really a, it's a really fun fun uh, system with a ton of information in there. So that's pretty much what, uh, you know, that's what I have going on. And there's a lot of information for you there as far as things to think about if you're becoming a full-time trader. You know, whether you want to go through the trading triangle program or not or something like that, that's up to you. Um, at the very least, those are all things that you really need to think about before you go out, go out on your own. Please don't just, you know, jump out there. I mean, if you have previous business, business experience and you know how to, um, to do that, that's great. Um, you know, and make sure you have sufficient capital. The number one is a failure for a small business is, is not having enough capital to run the darn thing. And a trading business is unique capital. That's how you make your money. So uh, you need to make sure you have enough capital. And, you know, my biggest thing is that everybody does well, and I hate to see anybody, uh, you know, not, not do well or, or jump out on their own and then have a problem with it. All right, so at this point, you know, I don't know if anybody has any questions, uh, but I'd be happy to talk to you and answer them. So what if I only want to make 2% a month? Is 200K enough? Is it 200K enough for what? Well, it depends on, that depends on how much of a living you want to make. So if you only have $200,000, you don't want to be, uh, you don't want to be, using all that uh, you know all that money to try and create an income for yourself i have some general recommendations on you know how much money should how much of my actual money should i be trading with so this is going to vary from person to person some people some people are going to be able to trade with more than what i say significantly more and some people less but without knowing your your um, your situation, I recommend is a maximum of 20% of your net worth in your, for planned capital in your uh, account. So if you have a net worth of a million dollars, your planned capital in your trading should only be $200,000. So if you have $200,000 to trade with, then you have a net worth of a million dollars and you um, can make 2% per month on that million dollars and that covers your expenses and leaves you enough left over to refund your trading account, to put some in savings, to build your trading account a little bit uh, after you figure all your numbers, then yes, it's enough to trade with, but you would have to live on a very, very skinny budget there. Uh, you know, the other thing is, is you know your particular situation. I'll give you an example. Um, you know, when starting a business, that's when I say 20% of your net worth, that is somebody who is, um, who wants to be very conservative and wants to maximize their chances of making it. Now, if you were opening an auto repair business, I would probably tell you the same thing. And being the case, I opened an auto repair business. I, I, was, a, 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 I was an auto mechanic growing up. That's what I did. When I was, oh gosh, I don't know, about 25, I took every dime that I had and then some and put it down to lease a building and to buy equipment and to open the business. And if I didn't make money the first week, I was pretty much done, right? I had to turn a profit my first month opening the business. Now, you can do something like that with trading as well. You can, you can do that, but you have to realize that it's a very, very high-risk situation and there's a good chance or a very large chance of failure. And, you know, when I opened that auto shop also, I wasn't somebody who's ever worked on cars before or, or only worked on cars for a couple of years. I went in, I started working on cars when I was 10 years old. My dad had an auto repair shop my, at night, and I worked on cars at night when I was 13, right? I went to school to a trade school to work on cars. I'd, work in, I'd worked in auto dealers. I'd worked in uh, repair shops, and I was a manager's repair shop. I knew the business inside and out, 
and I looked at that, and I also had a customer base ready to come in. I looked at all the things, and I said, I'm going to take a shot at this, right? If I was a new person that really didn't know a whole lot about the business, you know, I could just kind of fix cars once in a while, then uh, that would have been completely irresponsible for me to do something like that. And it was still, it was still irresponsible for me to do it, but um, it was a lot better chances of making it because of the background I had. So if you're a trader and you've been trading for 100 years and you know exactly what you can make, and um, you know, then you can go ahead and jump out and you can start trading more money than 20%. But if you're not a well-established trader, you shouldn't be you know, taking a big piece of your net worth and jumping out uh, on your own like that. All right, so what's the time commitment for the student that you recommend to become a full-time trader? Well, it takes 20,000 hours to be a master at anything. So, uh, you know, keep that in mind. That's a lot of hours. Uh, are you asking me how long, how long um, in training do you need to spend, or are you asking me how much time you you uh, how much time you need to spend on trading once you're trading? That's two different answers. And also, I mentioned 48 sessions in two years. How does the time frame change as a function of trading experience of the student? Well, generally, I'm there. I'm there to support you. With the program, I'm going to give you 48 sessions. I'm there to support you for a period of two years. And 48 sessions basically represents two sessions a month for two years. Uh, for a beginner student, then we're going to spend more time on um, more time on developing a system, probably, and teaching you actually how to trade. If you're a, a more experienced student, you know I have people who come in who are already trading with. I don't know, a million dollars, right? And they've been trading for years. They've got a million bucks in the market. And, you know, at that point, we're going to be going over more of your goals, refining your trading systems, getting emergency systems in place. I mean, there's a whole lot to talk about. You know, even if you're really good and really proficient at trading already, um, there's a whole lot that we can go over. And mindset's a, mindset's a really, really big thing. You know, like I said, I have uh, people I meet with, you know, for years just to get their, their uh, mindset and goals down sometimes. So we, I've never had, I've never not had enough to talk about, I'll tell you that. Uh, okay, and I believe I, that's all we have for questions. So thank you, Lewis, for that. Was there any other uh, things you were interested in talking about, Lewis? Your questions, I guess that's the appropriate. Um, the appropriate. Okay, fantastic. Uh, let me make sure there's nothing. Okay, here we go. Uh, for some reason, the, I'm sorry, I apologize, guys. For some reason, the questions, they come in randomly on different areas. So let me see if I can do this. Okay. Uh, what were some of the hurdles you had to face in, the, in transitioning to trading full-time and psychology? Let me tell you something about trading full-time. I, uh, I've started a lot of businesses. I started... A martial arts school when I was really young. I've had a auto repair business. I've had a computer consulting business. I've had a success coach business. I've had an auto sales business. Uh, I opened a home inspection franchise. I've done a lot of business stuff, and I can tell you that trading is the most is the hardest and most demanding business that I've ever started. Uh, it's so emotional, when, and I think a, a big part of it is the uncertainty. You know, if, if I'm going and I'm working on a car, or I'm dealing with a customer, I have a lot, a big amount of certainty that I'm, you know, I'm going to do this work. I'm going to get paid for it. Um, you know, everything's going to be okay. You know, when you go out and trade, you, especially if you're dependent on the income, you know, you, you go out there and you throw this money out at the market, and you kind of see what comes back at you, and you have no idea. Uh, you know, a lot of times, or, or or sometimes you'll have not very much confidence in the money coming back to you. So, you know, you start imagining, going in and imagining these worst case scenarios happening, and uh, and you start creating, you know, these really bad images in your head. And next thing you know, you're always thinking the market's going against you, and you're always, you know, over adjusting and and uh, and going back and forth. And that's what's going to kill you more than anything else. You know, it's 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 going to be the unwillingness to take a loss. 
you know, when we're trading, you have to kind of think of, um, you know, you, you you say you're not gambling, but you have a lot of instructors like to say, hey, you know, you're you're not gambling, you're you've got the odds in your favor or something. Well, I don't care if you have the odds in your favor or not. I mean, you're putting money down on a unpredictable event, hoping to get money back, and to me, that's gambling. Yeah, yeah, the odds are in your favor, and yes, you have a lot of control over it, but ultimately, you have absolutely no control over what the market's going to do, and you need to be okay with that. So, um, so basically, you know, the biggest hurdles you have to face is just, you know, giving up the idea that you can actually predict the market because you can't. You know, all you can do, and we talk a lot about this, you know, in the M21 program, you know, all you can do is is control what's within your control. And the only thing that's in the control is to follow your plan. And the market's going to do what it's going to do. I mean, you can, you can, um, you can guess at what the market's going to do, but but you can't make it do anything. Um, and if, you, if you're doing that all day, you're just going to stress yourself out, and you're going to ultimately lose because you're just not going to be able to follow your plan. So I think that is the biggest thing. I mean, trading brings out you know all the things that that ever ever happened in your life. They bring out your insecurities because you you know you were beat up by your father or, or whatever. You know they. Um, you know, any any of that stuff comes into trading. You know, anything that you're scared of, anything that you imagine, anything you dream. So, it's a it's it's really a uh, interesting adventure. All right. So, thank you, Ray. Appreciate that. Uh, okay. I do stocks and some verticals on options. What kind of instruments fit into your model? Okay. So, I think you're asking me. Are you asking me like within the trading triangle, or are you asking me, um, you know, what fits, you know, what instruments fit me for um, for my personal trading? Uh, I'll, 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 I guess I'll answer them both, right? So my my personal trading, I trade the Russell 2000 index options, complex option spreads, and that's pretty much all I trade. As far as my clients. Um, or actually, if you, and if you if you come in and you want to trade my systems that I have, the M3, the Bearish Butterfly, the Rock Trade, uh, they can be traded. They're all demonstrated in the Russell 2000. They can be they can be traded in uh, things like the SPX or any high priced index. The NDX is a little hard because it's a little high priced and you have to do so many modifications. It's a little, a little difficult. But usually anything around a thousand dollars, or actually between five hundred. In a thousand, you can also do them on stocks, but there are special considerations when trading stocks because stocks can move a lot more than an index. That being the case, you have to position size smaller. The good part is you can also make more money usually in stocks. Um, as far as um, you know, trading systems that we develop for traders, I teach uh, day traders, I teach futures traders, I teach swing traders, I teach uh, complex options traders. So. Um, you know, and even long-term value investing. So, someone might come into this program who's a uh, you know a swing trader, for example, and we come up with swing trading systems um, on stocks. So, basically, any stock. So, um, if we if we're going that route, it's whatever you have. Like I said, I like the options um, neutral stuff. You know, if you're more into verticals, and I am going to be coming out with a vertical program, by the way, a vertical spread program on stocks. At uh, some point in the future, it's already uh, in development. I've already been asked for it from my directional traders. So that's going to be coming. So basically, we can fit any kind of um, equity equities. I usually don't do anything, um, any kind of commodities or anything like that. I stay away from that. But equities and ETFs, uh, indices, all that stuff, um, you know, within the trading triangle program, we do that because ultimately the principles of winning and being a good trader are the same whether you're doing directional or you're doing market neutral. It's all the same principles. Okay, let's see. I believe that is all we have. I would really love to thank everybody for coming in and joining me tonight. I will post a, I'll send either John or you guys an email and 
uh, with a link on it, and you so just download it and you know, within a couple of days because I can only leave it up there for so long. Uh, I was actually thinking I may actually post this on my website as well or, or on YouTube, in which case I can send you the link for that so uh, you don't even have to download it. All right, that's what I have, and I appreciate you coming. Thank you, everybody, and you know, have an awesome – oh, hold on a second. Can I go into – details about my trading system for Russell 2000 e-mini index. Are you asking me if my strategies work on the Russell 2000 e-mini index? I'm not sure what you're asking me, Bruce. Um, are you talking about like directional trading? Okay. Well, All right, well, I don't see any answer from Bruce. So, all right, every, have a great night, everybody. And um, you know, if, if you need anything, I'm here. Thank you and good night.